Welcome to this Sunday morning. Let's bow down to Shri Mataji. Raise our Mother Kundalini and put on her. गणेश मंत्र Thank you. 
let's listen to shimaka ji speech it is continuation of yesterday's speech the feeling of auspiciousness can be felt through heart is the feeling from the heart not from the brain not from the ego or super ego means either we get ideas from our ego or from our super ego from our conditioning but if our heart is alive which is a very rare thing nowadays most of us have got hearts like frozen i would not say like rock of gibraltar because frozen can be you see can be defrosted so such a heart rock of gibraltar is living here you see and you meet another person and you feel that another is going to just bang on you with that rock of gibraltar i don't know if you have visited rock of gibraltar any time i have one day we were flying uh, in a, on a ship you see and suddenly our ship stopped and what i found is a huge big problem i said what sort of a thing it is because no ship can go near any rock that near because no no rock is that steep to give that much draft for the ship and this was uh, just like this in front i said what sort of a rock is this this is this is rock of gibraltar I was looking at it absolutely a solid piece you see and you thought it is going to hit you on your head something like that human beings become how can you feel the auspiciousness it's a very sensitive thing extremely sensitive and delicate all the delicacy of the heart i don't know where it is gone like lord byron style look at him what a life he had he made everyone miserable in his private life and in his poetry he made everybody cry <coughs> took out their eyes washed them again put them back in the socket <laughs> i mean he was a very great scientist i felt horrible he could not write anything beautiful he could not see anything beautiful he could not say anything that was pleasant and people have seen have wept and wept and wept and this fellow was enjoying nice having a nice time somewhere <laughs> it's nice to laugh it out because we had two patients who read only lord byron and were gone cases <laughs> you don't know in england i get such cases some samples he is no more here so i can tell you about him he used to just weep and weep and weep and then <laughs> we didn't do anything with him here we couldn't do much i told him why are you weeping you see and then i discovered he was a patient created by lord byr <laughs> i told him <laughs> not to take this poet very seriously i forget the word <laughs> he was just doing it to sell his books but the fellow couldn't get rid of it you see always used to get into that mood and very serious mood and this and that then we sent him home i sent some surgeons to his mother and father very nice people i must say they talked to me on the phone very good people they said mother if you say we'll keep him in the house he's a big man he's a big man about 30 years of age you know and third day the mother said i better chuck him out of the house mother i said why where will he go he said he's still doing the same thing he is in the room i have to serve him food i have to wash his things and he's just sitting and weeping so because you see the sensitivity is lost whom are you giving your heart to this lord byron of all the person this is the problem with us we do not know who is auspicious for example blake people won't like i mean the one who is the poet you have really i would say after shakespeare 
I wonder if Shakespeare was one man or many people put together. But Blake was the poet who had the greatest of all, I would say. There were so many also others. Wordsworth was another. You can see those who talk of charming things, of pleasant things and beautiful things are the poets. Not these garbage cleaners. What is wrong with us that we cannot make out between the stink and the fragrance? Auspiciousness is the way we emit our fragrance to others. For example, the other day two boys got realization and all the Sahaja Yogis ran through just to feel their vibrations and the rest were left behind because they were enjoying the person, the vibrations of that person. Then I shouted at them, I said, all right, now you have enjoyed, now go and see others also are there. And they would not go near somebody, you see, who was thinking he was a great man sitting down there. Nobody would go near them. They were holding their ears, sitting here, then everybody avoiding to go to that man. And the fellow must be feeling miserable, I know that, but I went to him and worked it out. But then I found that he was doing something very, very wrong himself. And he said, Mother, I am not evil. I said, no, it's not evil, but whatever you have done is evil. Is to play into the spirits, call them down, put on people, and this is evil thing to do. I did not know, Mother. I said, all right. That's all right. If he did not know, it can be forgiven. But this is what auspiciousness is, that you feel it from your heart which is awakened. The heart must be awakened. In the heart resides the spirit, which is not yet flowing in our consciousness, in our central nervous system. It resides there, the joy. It's, uh, I don't know if you have ever seen phosphorus taken out of the water and how it just <coughs> gets ignited. It's like that inside the Maya, the illusion, that spark is there. And when this Kundalini rises and touches that spark, it starts emitting its joy. It's auspicious. Unless and until you have that within you, you cannot feel the auspiciousness of others. Take a coconut, for example. Put it the other way round. You won't get vibrations. If you put it this way, the coconut coming up, you'll get more vibrations. There are certain coconuts who give you very good vibrations, some give horrible ones. And you know human beings also have coconuts. <laughs> some of the coconuts give such beautiful vibrations and some of them do not. Some of them are tired. Some of them are nothing but like a balloon of Mr. Ego, or some of them have nothing but super ego in them. So this coconut is to be made auspicious. Now how it is connected with spirit? That is a very important one. How our brain is connected with spirit? Whatever I am telling you, you need not believe me, but you will find it out for yourself that whatever I am saying is the truth. Your heart has the spirit, the light, and the heart has got seven auras around it. And these seven auras get enlightened. by the Spirit. But before that, it's a very instantaneous or we can say a simultaneous happening. When the Kundalini rises, there are seven centers also in our brain in the sense there are the seats of the centers. These seven centers are represented again on the seat, you know that very well. 
all the surge yogis know where they are. So when these centers are enlightened, the aura start shining in the heart. And this center is actually the center seat of the spirit. The spirit has moved from there and has gone to the heart. That's why in childhood you'll find there's a opening here. It's a very uh, soft bone called as fontanel bone. Talu is here. Because the spirit comes out from there and is settled on the heart. You know, spirit also come out in the night sometimes, goes around and sees. It's so. When these centers in our brain get enlightened by Kundalini, one by one, first they are enlightened here, then in the brain, then the auras in the heart start getting enlightened. Ultimately when this center, which is the center of the heart here, Sohastrara, this point, When this one gets enlightened, then the spirit also gets enlightened fully. And then these auras become doubly shiny. Then the auspiciousness is in many dimensions starts expressing itself. But to keep that light on, one has to keep the Kundalini over here. Then what happens? Then we are ruled by our heart's indication than by our brain. How? Because the heart has the spirit which emits vibration. It is not the brain. And you depend on your vibratory awareness after realization. The more you depend on your vibratory awareness, the more you use your heart, your spirit, not your brain. The more you use your brain, again you go down. Because it is taken over now by the spirit. For example, after realization, when you start thinking about it, I mean, people can think of anything. I mean, I can tell you, I've had such experiences that they would think that, why Mataji is wearing a sari like this? Even to this extent, you see, they can do. But if you can just leave your heart to work it out and don't think, because you are in thoughtless awareness after realization. If you try to maintain that state, pay attention to your heart and let your spirit emit itself, so that it clears out completely the confusion of the brain and everything, then you will be amazed that you cannot lose your vib your vibration, you cannot lose your realization. The simplest way is, I mean we have found this, this, that after realization, if you go for seven days treatment, you soaking feet before my photograph, it works out. But to me, immediately when I say my photograph finished, the ego comes up, why her photograph? <coughs> First thing comes up, who is she? I may be nothing. All right, I agree. I'm nothing. But I've raised your kundalini. <coughs> I've given you realization. I must be something after all. So why worry? I'm not taking away anything from you. Then you start establishing your auspiciousness, the sense of auspiciousness. Once you have established it, then you do not lose it. Really. You don't like then inauspicious things normally. If there's somebody inauspicious, you say, Mother, no, we can't do anything about this gentleman. All right. Afterwards, when you become very strong, you don't mind working on anyone whatsoever. But gradually you have to go up to it. I understand that. But I can't understand people using their rationality to under, understand Sahaja Yoga. How can you understand this great power 
with your limited rationality. I can explain to an ant about your politics, but I cannot tell you how this divine power works. One day he asked me, uh, Jamel, numerically, to what extent it goes, to what dimension? And when I told him, he said, it is incalculable. I said, it is infinite. You cannot calculate. If you put two mirrors facing each other and put some object in between, you cannot calculate how many reflections you will get. Even that you see, but you cannot calculate. But here I am talking about something that does that. It creates it. You cannot calculate all the molecules and the atoms of one element. But I am talking about somebody who has created them and who in every molecule pulsates. How can you understand with this brain? You can only become one with it and enjoy yourself. Why worry? Why do you want to count the molecules? Why this madness? It would be like a bad man going to the seashore to have a nice bath, starts counting the small little pebbles and the grains of the sand. Get in! Enjoy! You become this is Advaita, where you become one. All religions teach Advaita. Advaita means where there is not the other, Anan. You become one with that. With the whole ocean you become one. A drop becomes the ocean, the, all the powers of the ocean are there for the drop. That's what it is. But there are some po people who say we believe in Dvaita. No, why? We don't want to get lost. And you are not lost. You become the whole. But they want to keep their small limitations. You see. Now what is that small limitation they want to keep? It's called as Mr. E. G. O. Which is a myth. Which is a myth. It's a, such a big myth, you see. Because what do you do, human beings? Let's see now. What do you do? You make a chair, all right. See, people are even proud if they can make a chair these days, because nobody can use their hands these days, you know that. It's everything done by machines. I don't know, they cannot feed human beings, otherwise they may try that also. So what do you do? You create something dead out of dead. Everything is dead. Whatever you have created is dead. Have you done any living work? So one lady got very angry with me. She said, yes, we have created a tube baby. I said, you have not created. It was all there. The life was there. You just brought it together and it worked out that way. It's nothing. It's just like egg. Uh, being, uh, what do you say that? Egg, they put it in the incubator. It is that, simple thing. You have done nothing, you have put life into it. Have you? Let us confess it now. We cannot convert even one flower, transform one flower into a fruit. Let us admit it. What is this ego then? I do this and I do this. I would like that and I would have this and I, I, I. Who is this Mr. I who cannot do one living thing? Just ask yourself. Very simple thing. So, 
to reach a conclusion is a myth. We do not do anything. As that many times I have told you that some people going by train put all their luggage on their head. So they said, why are you carrying so much luggage on your head? They said, because you want to reduce the weight of the train. <laughs> This ego is like that, sitting on your head. I do it, I do it, I do it. But by brainwashing you, I cannot reduce. How? <laughs> the myth has to be broken. The myth breaks when Kundalini rises. Then how you talk is a very different language. It is not coming, it is not going, it is it. It becomes a third person. Then your power which is flowing through your hands, you see that going through your hands which you are maneuvering. You don't say, I am giving you realization, you don't. You just say, it is going, it is rising, it is not coming. Even if it is your son, you say, I cannot give now, what to do? Like a lady came with me to America once and she was very anxious that I must give realization to her son and all that. So I told her, look at this. Now, you have come all the way, I know, for this purpose. But now, if the Kundalini doesn't rise, do you want me to say that he's realized? No, 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 Mataji, I know it doesn't rise. Then I said, you give him a realization, I cannot give him. All right, you try. Then, but it doesn't rise. I said, then what to do? If the Kundalini is not coming, what can we do about it? So, the Kundalini has to come spontaneous with the living soul. But after realization, you start doing living things. You can raise the Kundalini. You can pulsate the Kundalini. I don't know about pulsation so far, I've not seen any Sahaja Yogi doing. But you can raise it all right. You can give realization. With my photograph, it works better. <coughs> you can <coughs> give vibrations now to the kids, to the plants, to the, to the fruit, or to any, any flower like this. If it is dying, it will come to life. If you give vibration, say, to a field of, or seeds of, uh, say, wheat, they can be multiplied. They can be ten times more than what they are. Now you have started giving vibrations to the seeds, to people, you are doing the living work. Now you have become the ocean of life. So far you were not. Because the power of life is to give life has come in. Now you are living. Before this, you were dead. In the sense that you were worshipping a dead God called ego, now it's a living God within you, it's a spirit. Once you start accepting your spirit, all your priorities change just like that. Because spirit is joy and happiness. Spirit is everything. So you start losing all your interest into other things. This is is what is. When you are auspicious, that is the greatest time. That even your name can create something great. And photograph can do wonder. If you become auspicious, then you are the holiest of the holy. For that, you have to get rid of some of the dirt and the dust. You have to get rid of some of the false notions we have and the myths of being. Some people have a myth that they are guilty, and some people, as I told you, have so many myths. But for giving up, if Kundalini works out, you allow her to work it out. That's it. it works. It has worked with so many women. And I'm very proud of my Sahaja Yogi. Anybody asked me, where do you find the best young people? I said, if you need it. It's a plot. They are not racially, they are not all this nonsense of any fanatics, nothing. Except for druggies and chemists, they are. <laughs> that also due to mistakes, but that I can correct. 
but most of them are beautiful people, very sincere, very honest, very good. Because England is the heart, is the heart of the nation, of the world. Whatever happens in England gets known all over the world. You know these people had this speech, today I read in the paper, they were giving an explanation about it. That we did it in England, it was not because we wanted to kill anybody or anything, but we wanted to talk to British government, so that if anything happens in London, it will be known all over the world. People still think that British are still the sanest people in the West. Still, they think like that, which is the truth. So, we have a very good group of people here. This has to expand. You have to find out more and more what we do. But don't tell them just now that you have to give up any one of their drugs their mistakes. Because if you tell them, then they'll run away. We, they made a mistake like this. I know that. No, they will just give up. You don't worry. Let them come. Because once they have found it, even if you tell them, they will not go there. Let them go. Let them go. By your auspiciousness, by your vibration, as the fragrance of the flower spreads, all the bees start hovering, knowing that there is the scent of the beautiful nectar hidden under these petals. I'm sure all of them will come. And one day, from England, we'll have a real spiritual upsurge for the whole world. We got that.
Our mother Kundalini and put one hand 